One of the things that the dot product is so good for is making sense of some of the implicit equations we've used for lines, planes, and hyperplanes. Remember when we discussed this earlier. It may have been clear, it may have not been so clear, but here's a simple way to do it. Let's say you have a point x0 and a vector n, and you want the equation of a hyperplane that passes through x0 and is orthogonal to this vector n. Here is the implicit equation. Take a point x on the hyperplane, look at the vector x minus x0, Take the dot product of that with n and set it equal to zero. That is the implicit equation for the hyperplane. If you think about it, this vector x minus x naught being perpendicular to n is saying precisely that the dot product is zero. And this helps us make sense of certain formulae that we've looked at in the past. For example, the formula for a one dimensional line in 2D using that point slope formula is really just the same thing as saying, oh, look, we're taking a dot product with this normal vector with components nx and ny. And in fact, the equation that we gave for a 2D plane in 3D passing through a point in terms of these uh, things we call three slopes, nx, ny, and z, this is really just taking the dot product with a vector n and setting it to zero. Now, this is incredibly useful in machine learning where hyperplanes uh, come under the name of support vector machines. Again, these are hyperplanes that separate two types of training data. So I know I have this type of data point and that type of data point. With this hyperplane, what I can do is test a new data point where I don't know on which side of the hyperplane it lies. Well, to figure that out, I simply take a dot product and register whether it's positive or negative. More specifically, choose some point on the hyperplane and an orthogonal vector, say n. Then I take the dot product between the vector from my chosen base point, my new data point, and this normal vector n. If it's positive, it's on one side. If it's negative, it's on the other. Now that looks simple enough when you're in 2D or 3D, but when you're dealing with realistic data sets where you're working in a space whose dimension might be a thousand, a million, it's not so easy to see what's going on, but it is easy to compute a dot product.